Yo, 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 people and patrons of the night, it is the Horrorlander, your number one favorite horror hero. And today I got a review video, pseudo sponsored by Brought Studios, which is going to be my coverage of Scary Tales to Tell in the Dark by Anthony Masters, which is a kids horror short story collection by Anthony Masters, who is a British author who unfortunately passed away in the early 2000s, so RIP to him. But he wrote a lot of adult novels as well as kids horror novels and just kids novels in general. Um, and he has other kids horror short story collections that are similar to this that like focus on vampires or monsters or other stuff. So I decided to pick this up because the title of the book sounded very much similar to Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which obviously came before this book. And this book is relatively unknown. If you go on Goodreads, it's got like 30 ratings, three reviews, so pretty much overlooked. Not many people know about it, and I suspect that this book's title being a slight variation to Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark by Alvin Schwartz, which is much, much more famous than this book. This one probably got caught up and overlooked in Alvin Schwartz's shadow. Um, but this book is not ripping off Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Um, it's got completely different types of kids' horror stories. Um, they're all very unique, all very different, and uh, they show off Anthony Masters' uh, writing style, which, although I'm, I'm not wowed by this short story collection, um, as you read it, you can tell that Anthony Masters is a very talented writer, and he's got some really unique and cool and fun concepts for kids' horror, even when the execution is sometimes lackluster or just decently good. Um, so I'm going to be covering all nine, uh, excuse me, all ten of these short stories, and then I'll give my overall thoughts about the book. So this book came out in 1992. Obviously, it came after Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark was out. And the first story in this short story collection is called Nasty Nanny. And Nasty Nanny is actually my favorite short story in this collection because it is wild. It's got some crazy plot line and honestly if it had a little bit more pages I think it could have been maybe even fleshed out into like a novella um, and I think that would have been a really cool kids horror novella to get Nasty Nanny more fleshed out but even as a short story it is very good so this is definitely my favorite short story in this collection. So Nasty Nanny is about this girl who, and I, oh, I forgot to say this. This book actually features a, um, are you afraid of the dark kind of midnight society thing where it opens up with all these kids who are having a sleepover in this rickety old sort of mansion, um, on the higher level of it, um, during a cold winter, um, or like Christmas night over in Britain. So you get this very creepy atmosphere and you got this Midnight Society kind of thing where all the different kids are telling stories that allegedly happened to them. They actually claim that these stories happened to them during their life. And uh, they're promoted as ghost stories, but they're not all ghost stories. Some are creature feature, some are different. And then you do have actually a few ghost stories, but it's a sort of campfire tales that these guys are telling. So Nasty Nanny is about this girl who she's very mischievous. Um, a lot of the nannies have walked out on her, have gotten frustrated with her, and she can't seem to keep one. And then one day she gets this uh, nanny who shows up and something is off about this nanny. Um, she sees her out the window and this nanny, and I read these stories a while ago, so I'm going to keep the descriptions very brief for this video, um, just because I don't remember all the details, but I remember my general thoughts. Um, this nanny shows up one day to her house and there's something off about her. She looks pretty ominous. She can swear that this nanny is like levitating or like moving across the ground without actually, you know, moving or touching it. Like it just seems to be floating across. And when she enters her room, you know, the nanny is very strict, very stern. The mother seemed to hire her for that reason. And something is off because the little girl soon becomes very quiet and doesn't want to speak up or act up the way she normally would. And as the story continues and she's being, you know, uh, looked after by this nanny, um, this nanny, you know, seems pretty trustworthy. She gets 
you know, a little bit more attention by the girl. And she starts telling these uh, fantasy stories before the girl goes to bed. And it's all about, you know, these, um, like, stories, these fairy tale kind of stories about lands of these crazy creatures and entities and, you know, weird things in like a Narnia kind of place or a fantasy kind of place. And eventually, it may or may not be revealed, that these stories are very much unique, talking about creatures from far, far away, fantastical lands, uh, because this nanny may or may not have something to do with that. And uh, let's just say that some of these things may or may not start getting brought into the real world, brought into life, and the climax to this story is that shit crazy. I mean, it is insane, some of the stuff that happens, the creature feature action you get in the climax of the story, where it feels like a horror version of Dr. Seuss's A Walk It In My Pocket. Um, so if you've read A Walk It In My Pocket, imagine the premise of that book, uh, that kid's book, except done in a horror, scary, creepy version. Um, so yeah, that was a very, very good short story and uh, i would give that one like an 8.5 out of 10. it is very good and i thoroughly enjoyed that i love the creature feature action i love the dark fantasy stuff and the dr seuss a walk it in my pocket kind of climax is very terrifying next story is called kelpie kelpie is about um this i guess uh kid who tells a story about how his dad had a best friend who was a TV show producer who went to, I think, go film or go hang out at this one spot off the coast um, of this, you know, sea. And then what ended up happening was one day this uh, whiskey bottle ended up floating with a message inside of it. And it said something to a, like to the lines of, help us, the, it's too late, they're coming after us, um, or something like that. So it was a very ominous message. And after that, um, the friend, this TV producer friend of the dad ended up going missing. And the father was affected by it. He was very much upset that his best friend disappeared and he was down in the dumps. Um, but what eventually ends up happening is that the dad decides, you know what, he wants to basically find closure to his best friend's story. And he wants to head back out to that coast um, or that area where his best friend had disappeared. And the kid, the the child in the story decides, you know what, I wanna tag along with you, dad. And the dad says, no, this could be potentially dangerous. You know, I don't want to leave, um, you know, with you. Um, but the kid convinces and they come along with the dad. And uh, they get to this coast and they hear some weird things. They hear some siren type of noises. They see some ominous weather. Um, there's something off about this coastline by the sea. And the story uh, may or may not involve people turning into seals, uh, which is a very weird concept, but it gets creepy as the story progresses. And like one horror movie out there that is pretty goofy for how bad and weird it is, but it is a disturbing one to me is uh, Tusk 2014 featuring Justin Long um, about a dude turning into a walrus in one of the most messed up ways possible you could think. So this kind of reminded me of like a kid's horror version of that. You know, it's it's much more tame, but it is weird. You got some really disturbing, creepy imagery. Some stuff you'd probably see off like Courage the Cowardly Dog or Billy and Mandy. Some creepy stuff along those lines. So yeah, this is a weird story, but I'd give it like a 7 out of 10. You know, it's decent. It's fine. Um, it's not bad. I think that the weirdness actually helps it out. And um, if you're afraid of body horror... I think this story will pretty much do it for you. I actually thought that short story would be more creepier than it was, but it went down a more weirder direction, so it is what it is. The third short story is called Mountain Madness. It's about these kids who are out skiing um, out in this like winter forest um, where there's like a lot of snow, and they eventually stumble upon this giant fairy tale like castle where they see a bunch of people in these beautiful gowns and garments that are ballroom dancing um through the open door and they the kids slowly start to realize that the people that are ballroom dancing are not human 
they are actually uh, werewolves or bipedal wolf people that are all dancing in these fancy garments. And they happen to see on the top story of this castle that there is a woman or girl, uh, a normal looking woman or girl who's up there. And they suspect that she might be trapped up there um, and she might become victim to these wolf people. So they try to get their parents the next day to come and see the castle with them because they're scared. Next thing you know, they come to the same spot and the castle is not there. And when their parents leave, of course, you know, you got to believe me. And then they see the castle again. And again, they start to suspect something bad might happen to that girl or woman who is up in that castle um, with these wolf people. So they decide to go up there and try to help her out. And uh, there's a twist, a big twist in the story that recontextualizes some stuff. Um, this one I would give like a six out of 10. You know, I thought, again, this is a very strange concept. Anthony Masters comes up with kids horror concepts that you won't see in other places. Um, so that was unique to it. But execution was all right. You know, I, I wasn't too that much interested in it. Maybe I'd bump it up to like a 6.5 out of 10. It's like a higher end of an okay. Um, so yeah, unique. It's memorable, but nothing too crazy for me. Next one is called The Wrong Bus, and this one has a fantastic story premise. It's about this kid who ends up taking this public transportation bus, and he takes the wrong one, as the title hints, and it ends up taking him to the local cemetery, a graveyard. And all these strange people start boarding up on this um, bus. I think he's supposed to, I think he's trying to get to a Halloween party. And, you know, he takes the wrong bus to the cemetery and he sees all these people getting on and they got these disgusting, dirty garments, these old school garments. They look pretty ghastly and, you know, sickly. And he suspects, OK, maybe they're dressed up as like ghouls or zombies or something for a Halloween party. And as they come on, he slowly starts to realize mm, these people might actually be dead. And you find out that every Halloween um, there is an opportunity for the dead to actually come back on this bus, this graveyard bus, and take it to go visit their loved ones um, out in the main city. So he meets this girl who's on there, and this girl talks about how her parents were actually buried in the wrong graveyard. Uh, when she died and her parents died, she was buried in the wrong graveyard. Or I think her, I think she died early on and her parents died after, and they were buried in a different graveyard. So she wants to find her parents. She wants to reunite with them. But there's a problem, because in this world, every graveyard has entities called the appointed dead. And the appointed dead are the guardians of the cemeteries that ward off and basically kill or erase any vengeful spirits or grave robbers or intruders who come into the cemetery. So if this kid wants to help the girl, he'll have to deal with potentially getting caught by the appointed dead. So you got that as a little mini adventure story. Um, this was a fantastic concept. I'd probably give this one a eight out of 10 or even yeah, you know what? I'll give I'll give nasty Na I, I gave nasty nanny at eight point five. I'd give this one an eight out of ten. It's a good concept. I enjoy this one. Or maybe I'll give it an eight point five because the concept in this story is really unique. It's really cool. I like the whole appointed dead stuff. I like the idea of Halloween as a holiday being the one time in a year when some crazy stuff happens. Um, there's a similar premise in one of my favorite R.L. Stein horror short stories called uh, The Graveyard Dance. Um, so yeah, this is a very cool short story. Um, so I'd say it's, it's good. It's really good. Next one, uh, the fifth story is called The Ghost Mirrors. Um, this one is about a gypsy who ended up getting chased by a police officer due to being like a robber or something. And she ended up jumping inside of a mirror, um, with some, this haunted mirror or something. She jumps inside of this mirror and a bad accident happened where the glass actually shattered and it actually sliced her hand off and she bled all over this broken mirror. And later on, these kids open up with going to this amusement park, this fair area, and they end up going into the house of mirrors and they see this woman's hand reaching through one of the mirrors out to them and gesturing them to come in. And they may or may not enter that mirror, uh, which was the origin story, the urban legend of the gypsy. And they enter a brand new landscape, this desert area with these giant, what seems like um, 
snow globe kind of glass domes all across this barren desert. And uh, they find out some stuff about this urban legend, uh, some people involved in it, and how it can all be solved. And the ending is pretty dark. So I'd give this one an 8 out of 10 as well. This is a good short story. It has some brutal imagery and stuff in there. Again, I think British kids horror can get away with stuff that you can't get away with another stuff because there's just open murders, violence, gore, drinking. That stuff would not pass in U.S. kids horror. So, yeah, if you want more raw, you want more edgy kids horror, I think a lot of you guys should check out uh, British books. Because I think British books get away with some crazier stuff, especially back in, like, the 1990s, 1980s and stuff. So, that's the ghost mirrors. Number nine is uh, the actual sixth story. Number nine, I think, involves, like, a kid who his house ends up getting like um, occupied by a bunch of ghosts, this ghost of a kid who was out in like the sea back in like the pirate era or something or like the colonial era. And his mother's trying to stab and kill him. The ghost of his mother is trying to stab and kill this guy. Meanwhile, the father's trying to save him. So this kid ends up having this very like strange ghost experience where these ghosts are like killing and battling each other inside of his house. Uh, this one was okay i'd give it like a 6.5 out of 10 it's an okay story it had some dark imagery it had some dark story involving a kid almost getting killed by his father and his mother um but it seemed a little bit too random it sort of felt like you're just thrown in there and the ending was sort of meh it was all right um next one number seven is the green man this is the only mid story in the book i give it like a five out of ten um, this one is about like some kids who are protesting against this landlord or landscaper dude who's trying to get rid of this beautiful forest to accommodate some buildings or condominiums. And maybe, maybe not the forest takes some revenge in a certain form um, in the story. Um, it's a very predictable one and there really wasn't much to it outside of what I just told you. So that one I'd give like a 5 out of 10. Number 8 is called Time Trip. This is another really weird one. Um, a trippy one. Get it? Time Trip is about this kid who's like at a hotel swimming pool with his mom watching. And as he's in the pool, the pool water starts freezing around him and some entity forms out of ice and drags him to some era or cave where a bunch of soldiers ended up getting killed and shot. Um, another really strange one. I wasn't too fond of that just because it was really hard to keep up with and I didn't really understand the premise of that. So I give that one also like a 6 out of 10. It's a, it's a meh story. Uh, number nine is The Haunted Gondola, which is actually a oh, pretty cool story concept. Um, these kids are out over in uh, like Venice, obviously, because Venice is where they have the canals and gondolas. And I have been to Venice before, Venice, Italy. So this is a relatable story to me. <laughs> Maybe it's hard for it to be relatable to anybody who's not visited Venice. But I, luckily, God bless, have been to Venice on vacation. So pretty relatable story to me. Um Haunted Gondola is about these kids who end up seeing this these older folks like come out of like a, a church and enter a gondola and as they're riding in the canals the stone statues and sculptures that are across town and the architecture start like coming alive so these stone children come out and start pointing and moving at the people and the kids are like WTF what's going on here and they end up going across this bridge and then these kids basically find out that this gondola may be taking dead people on a ride through the canals and then making them younger temporarily until they get dropped off and then they have to return back to the grave. Or I don't know if they return back to the grave. They might just get back a choice at life. But I think it's just like a, a nice ride for the dead. Um, and eventually one of the girls decides to become a little bit uh, rambunctious and she decides well I'm not dead but I want to take a ride on the haunted gondola and uh, it has some bad effects things go bad uh, for those poor decisions so yeah pretty messed up story I'd give this one a 7.5 out of 10 this is a pretty good story and I actually dug the story concept um, it was really unique and really cool definitely memorable and lastly, the 10th story in this book is called The Vampire. This is the only story in the book which is not that unique. It's pretty um, formulaic and predictable, but it's got some dark stuff in it towards the ending. It's about a kid who's hanging out with his uncle who owns a gas station out on the countryside. And a kid eventually pulls up in this dark limousine. Um, the chauffeur gets out and fills up the gas. But the kid looks sick. The kid looks really, really upset. And eventually the kid in the gas station approaches him. 
His uncle tells him not to approach that kid because he may be sick and there's some stuff wrong with him, but he ends up doing it anyway. And the kid actually um, kind of kicks it off with the, this main character. And the main character gets invited to his house. And his house ends up being this Transylvanian castle kind of place. And uh, as the title of the short story might hint, uh, this kid might be more than meets the eye. And uh, there might be some bad decisions that are made. And that's where I'll leave it at. That was a pretty predictable one, but it was still decently good. So I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. Predictable, but it's got some dark stuff in the ending. And that is my review for Scary Tales to Tell in the Dark by Anthony Masters. Overall, this was a pretty fun short story collection. Nothing too mind-blowing, but it's got a lot of unique stories in it that will seem memorable to you over the years. So if you want to break out of the formulaic stuff you usually sometimes get in kids' horror, I would suggest checking out this book. It's a quick read. It's like 140-something pages, 30-something pages, so you can fly through it. And uh, that's all I got for today. I'd give this a 7.5 out of 10. And I would recommend that all of you kids horror fans do check it out at some point. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for more content to come on my channel. If you enjoyed this review, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that like button and share this video around. It'd be very much appreciated. And of course, as the horror lander, publicity matters and brought studios needs me to bring up the marketing. So all that stuff would be very helpful. And uh, check out some of the other videos on my channel. I got plenty of other kids horror stuff, teen horror, adult horror. And uh, stay tuned for more content that's going to be dropping this summer. So until next time, uh, deuces from the horror lander. Brought to you by Broad Studios, a.k.a. Brokefoot Studios. Ding.